Hi. Today I'm talking about GTK, the GUI framework for desktop platforms. Unfortunately, it doesn't have mobile support yet, even though from time to time Android support is discussed and maybe they are working on it, but it will take a long time until it's ready. But for desktop, it's one of the oldest and well-established platforms you can have. So it was founded in 97. For comparison, Qt was founded in 95. So both of them are approximately almost, well, they are 30 years old. And GTK was originally developed for the GNOME desktop and is still being used mostly on Linux for GNOME-based distributions. So it is kind of Linux-centered. The ports for macOS and Windows have been developed over time. I think they were first ready with GTK3. Now we have GTK4. So by now they are working well on these platforms, but they have a relatively low platform integration and they don't fully have the platform native look and feel. So in comparison to Qt, I would say Qt tries to be very much like the platform native widgets and GTK doesn't even try that. Does that matter? Probably by now it doesn't matter that much. Now let me show you um, some project I had. Well, I can't find it any longer now. Let me check. And that was here. So this is an unfinished project I once worked on that illustrates GTK3. So that's with the GTK3 bindings. And that's a typical look um, here. You have some kind of toolbar. You have some buttons. You have menus. You have fairly performant lists. So this is a list with 2,000 entries. It's very... Performant, and if it's slow, that's just my programming, actually. You have layouts that you can change very easily. You can change almost anything in the layout. It even has a CSS-based styling system, very similar to when you style web pages. So if you know that technology already, then it's even easier to change the styles. And you can theme that very easily, so you don't need to have an out-fashioned design from the 2000s, like this unfinished app. So given that there are only two developers in GTK, or two main developers and the rest are contributors, I think they are doing a very good job. So it's up to date and working on the desktop platforms. Now let me show you some of these here also have this for instance we can have so these are the demos from the uh, gtk4 bindings this shows you something how to use go routines they are not very spectacular unfortunately except for the supposed hacker news client which would be nice to see but it doesn't work on my machine so they can see that if your GTK4 bindings are not exactly the same as the ones from this source, then you might get into troubles with it. Now I wanted to show you something about the implementation here very briefly. Here's how you, for instance, use a text view. And what you end up with, since it's so low level in Go, you will probably write your own wrapper structures. Like here, you have a view that is the text view, that's the edit control. And then you have a text buffer, which is something invisible that does the text buffering. And then you have a scroll and you combine all that. You have a text set here, that, that's for me. Then you also have a frame here and a box. So the whole layout in GTK is a bit too low level to use it directly, in my opinion, and you will end up having your own wrapper structures. But then, once you have done that, it's fine. You can see here, uh, it's a bit low level. All right, 
Time to summarize. What do I think about GTK4? I think it's a great GUI. It works well with Go. Of course, it's kind of low level. It's based on C and it has some kind of low level bindings. It's thin bindings, not very thick bindings. But if you're fine with that, um, if you're fine with having to type a little bit more code to achieve the same effect, then it's fine. It gives you the same look and feel on every platform, but it's not necessarily the platform native look and feel. So if you're worried about having platform native look and feel on Windows and Mac OS, you shouldn't use it. But if you're fine with having the same look and feel and the same theming for all of your platforms for your application and you want to have your own theme anyway, then it's a good choice for desktop development. Now, mobile doesn't even enter the question. There is no mobile support, so you cannot use it for that, unfortunately. So for me, it's not a good choice because I still want to try to have the same source for mobile and desktop. So I'm looking for Golang GUI bindings that can be used for mobile and desktop alike. Okay, so that's it. Hope you liked this video and see you next time. Next time I'm going to talk about another Golang binding. There are many to choose from and I don't know which one yet, but see you next time and bye.